Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Join my VIP program today to speak English powerfully. Speak English effortlessly. Speak English fluently. Think in English. Join my VIP program now. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join today at Effortless English Club. Dot com. We're starting our new book tomorrow for our next book club book. Our book, The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Coelho. Someone told me to pronounce it like I would in Spanish. So Brazilians, how's that? Coelho. Coelho. Paulo Coelho. That's how I would pronounce it in Spanish. Coelho. This is kind of Brazil week for me. You know, The Alchemist, the book, it talks about omens a lot. A lot of the book talks about omens, omens, omens. What's an omen? O-M-E-N. Omen. An omen is like a sign. Uh, it's a sign from the world, a sign from the universe, right? It's a message. Some people might describe it as like a message from God or a message from the universe or a message from, I don't know, angels or spirits or something. I guess it could even come from something bad. But it's kind of like a, like a s supernatural, right? Meaning almost magical type of message. And the, it, it's, a, it's a certain kind of message. It's a message telling you if something is you know, like a, something's good to do or bad to do. So it's usually a message about an action or some, or a message about something that will happen. I'll, I'll give you an example. The, the old Vikings, my ancestors from long, long ago, <laughs> they also believed in omens very strongly. And so they had the belief, for example, if they were going to go on a trip, right, take a boat, sail over to England and attack the poor English. Well, maybe in the morning it's time to go, right? They're planning to get in the boat and go to England. But in that morning, a black bird flies across their boat and lands on their boat and sits on the boat. Well, they might have believed this is a, a sign, a message, right? A message from the gods is the Vikings would have believed it was a message from their gods. You know, maybe they thought would think, oh, this is a bad message. It's oh no, this is a this is a means bad luck. So maybe today we should not leave. Today we should not leave. We will we'll, we'll Leave tomorrow because we have a bad omen today, right? The black bird is a bad omen. Maybe, I don't know. A, a black bird, a raven for the Vikings, I don't know. That might have been a good omen, actually, because they were the birds of Odin, their biggest, most powerful god. But anyway, you get, you get the idea, right? The bird arriving, that would, that's an omen, an omen. And then they would think, oh, this is some kind of message. And then, and of course, it's not an obvious message, so then they would have to try to figure out, or does this mean bad luck? Does this mean good luck? Oh, I don't know, right? It, now, nowadays, most of us don't believe in omens very much. Most people would say it's just a coincidence. It just happens. It's maybe a chance. Uh, but some people have a little bit of an idea of omens. Paulo Cuello, in the story, talks a lot about omens and how they're kind of messages and to pay attention to them. 
Well, for me, it's, it feels like this week has been an... I've been getting omens about Brazil. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm um, just finding articles. I've been reading articles about Brazil, and uh, I've noticed like, on YouTube some videos popped up about Brazil, and in my Gab account, I've seen some things about Brazil. We're reading The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Paulo Coelho is Brazilian. Uh, and then recently I've been uh, I've been seeing and reading things about uh, Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro, who probably will become the new Brazilian president. I, th I think I think you all I think the Brazilians are voting uh, this coming weekend. If I'm I think I'm, I'm I don't, I'm not sure about the date, but they had the first round. Now they're going to have the the final round of voting. It's this guy Bolson, Bolsonaro against somebody else. I don't know who the other person is. <laughs> but this Bolsonaro guy, I, I, on, this, on a blog I read, they had a video of him uh, basically yelling at a reporter. I, I have, maybe not a reporter. It was just some woman who was insulting him. This kind of very left-wing, kind of communist woman. And oh my God, they had a translation underneath because of course they're speaking Portuguese. But uh, they had the translation. It was so funny. Oh my God, it was funny. I was laughing and laughing and laughing. I could not stop laughing. This guy's he's like a comedian. But, I mean, he, he was angry, but, but just what he was saying is so direct, so red pill. It was, I thought it was hilariously funny. So um, <laughs> anyway, I hope he becomes president because uh, I think he's extremely uh, funny and he very red pill. He reminds me of Donald Trump, but even more, even stronger than Donald Trump. What a lot of people don't realize, because you get all this fake news about Donald Trump in the, uh, in the media, of course, they lie about him constantly. But what a lot of people don't realize about Donald Trump is that he's very funny. He's very funny. When I watch his speeches... Um, Again, he Donald Trump is super red pill, and uh, the the stuff he says is extremely funny. And the the thing that makes Donald Trump funny is he's so direct, right? Normal politicians they're always lying, 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 right? They never say things directly. They never say the truth. They never say red pill truths, right? They're always giving us pretty lies, pretty lies, pretty lies. And the reason so many people hate Donald Trump in the media is because he often will give us some very um, hard red pill truths. And they're not politically correct at all, but they are true. And he, but he says them in a way that it's, that it's often very funny. Um, <laughs> if you have a sense of humor uh, and you understood the English, that's the hard part. You might not understand the humor you might not understand why it's funny if you don't understand uh, the English or if you don't understand the culture, right? The American culture. So for that reason, maybe if you listen to Donald Trump's speeches, you might not understand why many parts are, f are funny. Why are people laughing so much? But uh, that's why. It's just because he's so direct, very red pill. He's not a politician. You know, this guy was a billionaire uh, business person. He... He was never a politician. This is his first political job as president. <laughs> he just skipped all the other jobs. So he doesn't have a habit of lying. He's also from New York City. And New Yorkers have a reputation for being very direct. So he's so direct, so red pill. It's very funny because it's so, so different than most of the lying politicians like Obama and Bush and Clinton and... Even Reagan. I mean, they're, all of them. All of our past presidents in my lifetime, you know, they're always trying to be politically correct and then sound nice all the time and they never really tell the full truth. So it's very funny when to finally get someone who's so red pill and so direct. And this is why I think uh, Bolsonaro is is hilariously funny because he's even more i mean i thought trump was like the most i've ever seen and i've been reading some things some translations of uh bolsonaro's quotes and seen some of his videos and oh my god this guy is he's even more it would be so funny to see him and trump meet <laughs> anyway brazilians good luck that guy's awesome he's funny now, what's, another interesting thing about this Bolsonaro guy is that uh, his 
campaign uh, slogan uses the number 17, Bolsonaro 17. I don't know why I've been searching. Why 17? Brazilians, tell me on Gab. Why? What's this number 17 mean? Is that, is he the, will he, will he become the 17th president? Is that what it is? Or is 17 have some other meaning? But the reason I noticed this number 17 is that Q uses the number 17. This has a very strong connection to Q. So it's very interesting to me. I, I, I don't know if Bolsonaro has a connection with Q and what's happening with this uh, Q movement. I know that many of the things and the events that Q talks about, this sort of secret war between globalists and nationalists, I know it's international, so I, w I would not be surprised if there is some kind of connection. But in, in the world of Q, 17 means, 17 is a code for Q, because Q is the 17th letter of the English alphabet, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. If you count, A is number one, B is two, C is three, Q is number 17. Isn't that interesting? And so Q will use the number 17 for different things. It's kind of a, it's kind of like a little inside joke. We say inside joke. It's like a little joke for Q followers. But what's also interesting is that President Trump in many, 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 many different situations has also used this number 17. In several speeches, he has used the number 17 and he's used this number 17 in, in a little bit unusual ways. And most people don't notice. But people who follow Q, they notice like, oh, what? He, he said 17 again. He, when he gives examples, when he tells stories, often he'll use the number 17. It seems like it's not random. It seems like it's, like it's planned. And so Q people, people who follow Q, they think, ah, Trump is, this is kind of Trump's little secret way to tell people that Q is real. Trump has taken some pictures with athletes, you know, like football players, for example. And in many of these pictures, they will have a uniform, a football uniform, and the uniform will have the number 17. So it's interesting. I don't, is this, is this real or is this just kind of a, is it, imagined i don't know it's kind of fun it's it's fun it's not serious don't it's nothing to be too serious about but it is kind of funny and it's interesting just seeing this number 17 in these different situations who knows who knows maybe of course the main brazilian connection we have here is the alchemist and paulo coelho we'll start a new book tomorrow the Alchemist. I've been struggling, actually. I just finished rereading The Alchemist. And I've been kind of struggling. There's a lot in there. A lot of messages that Cuello puts in this. You know, this... It's not a normal kind of story. You know, the... Cuello's main, mess, main point is he wants to teach these messages. And you have to understand the background of Paulo Cuello what he's trying to teach. You know, he uh, he kind of is a follower of a, uh, I, don't, I don't want to say secret society, but kind of. It's a kind of uh, group that is, um, I can't remember the name of it, but they're kind of like the Rosicrucians, if you've ever heard of them. But anyway, they kind of believe in um, some of these ideas we see in The Alchemist. And it's kind of this spiritual group. And so he wrote The Alchemist to present these ideas. So the stories are designed to present these ideas, to share these ideas. So the story is... Is kind of secondary, right? The, the 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 messages are very obvious in the Alchemist. Okay, they're not subtle, right? They're very obvious. It's it's obvious that these messages he's trying to teach, these ideas or these beliefs, that's the main point of the book. And then the stories are just used to teach those ideas. The stories are really less important. 
Now, this is called, usually it's called a parable, a parable. A parable is a story that is very specifically designed to teach a message. Right? Now, some stories, I mean, you know, most stories we can find meaning, we can find messages. But in some stories, the messages are more deep, right? They're less obvious. You have to think about them. But in other stories, like The Alchemist, the messages are super, super, super obvious. In fact, the messages are the main thing, and the story is really just there for the message. It's the message that's the strongest, and the story's actually more in the background, more weaker. And that's called a parable. It's a specific type of story. I think some children's stories are like this. They're parables, right? The whole story is designed to teach the children some idea, right? Like, you know, I don't know, don't steal or be careful about strangers or something like that. So they, the whole story is very obviously designed to teach this idea, this message. That's a parable. And that's what the alchemist is. A very different, so a more normal kind of story or novel would be something, let's say Hemingway, let's say The Old Man and the Sea. You read The Old Man and the Sea, Hemingway does not directly tell you the messages he wants you to learn from that story. Now, of course, he has some very deep messages, and there's, there's so many deep levels of meaning in the story, The Old Man and the Sea. It's, a, it's an excellent story. But you have to really think about the story. It's less obvious. And the story itself is very, very, very uh, powerful. It's the most obvious thing. If you don't think about it, you could read that story by Hemingway. You think, oh, it's about an old man. He goes out to the ocean. He catches a big fish. And then he, he, has, to, he has a hard time bringing it back. That's the story. It's told very well with a lot of detail, but if you didn't think about it at all, if you were not a thinker, okay, then you, you could just say, oh, it's just a story about a guy who catches a fish. You have to really think about it to and dig a little bit and think more deeply, and then you begin to realize, ah, it's about much more than that. With Coyle's book, in fact, with Coyle, all of Coyle's books, because I've read a few of them, it's quite the opposite. You do not have to dig very much with Coyle's books. His messages are very, very, very direct and kind of strong. One of those messages I want to talk about today, it's a message that I didn't think about deeply when I read this book the first time. I read this book the first time, I, probably 20 years ago, something like that. I can't remember how old this book is, but it was a long time ago I read this book when I was much younger and less experienced. And, you know, my idea about the book then was very different than now. Rereading the book, I actually understand and think about this book and have a different opinion about this book that's very, 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 very different now than when I was younger, which is interesting. I always enjoy reading books like this and then reading them again later in life. And it's, it's just so interesting how your understanding of the book can completely change because of greater, more life experience. And that has happened with me and this book, The Alchemist. Finishing the book, there's one topic I think we must talk about because I have identified one, what I believe now is one very, very, very dangerous, uh, potentially dangerous weak point of the alchemist. Something that we should talk about from the beginning. And I'll talk about this again tomorrow. I didn't notice this when I was younger. I didn't, when I was reading the book, I didn't even think about this, but now I 
realize is it's actually something we we must think about more deeply because Coelho does not think about it deeply. He, at least not in his book, he doesn't in this book. And it's the it's desire. So one of the main ideas of this book is the universe conspires to aid your powerful desires. Basically, this means the universe will help you achieve your desires. Now, I've, I've even talked about this idea in, in podcasts before. I mean, the basic idea of this is uh, I, I agree with him. Thoreau, I think, you know, Thoreau 150 years ago said this exact same thing. He said it a little bit with different words, but the same idea that when you have faith, when you, how Thoreau said it was when you go towards your dreams, when you move towards your dreams confidently, the universe or God will support you. It, it feels like, at least, it feels like something helps you achieve those dreams when, when you take action towards them confidently and strongly. Now, I like the way Thoreau said it better because I think Thoreau uses better vocabulary. Now, may, this might be a translation problem because I don't know what word Coelho used in Portuguese, right? The original book was written in Portuguese. So, I don't know what specific words he used in Portuguese. The translator for my book uses the word desire. And I think that's uh, a bad choice of words. That's a bad choice. I think that dreams is a better choice. Thoreau's use of the word, Thoreau used the word dreams instead of desires. I think dreams would be is a better word to use. Purpose would be a better word. Mission would be a better word. Let's talk about why desire could be a little dangerous because in this book is the idea that if you f that you should follow your desires, right? That your desire that all desires are good, that all desires come from God basically. And that you should follow your desires, especially your powerful desires. That you should follow them and they will lead you to, you know, your your life purpose. This is one of the main messages of this book. However, I disagree. He's wrong. He's wrong. If we use this word, we have to, we need to say it a little differently. In some ways, he definitely is right, but, but there's a danger here. The way he says it in this book is dangerous. So we have to think a little more deeply about this so that we don't get the wrong idea. Why am I saying this? Well, he says the universe will help you with your strong desires. He's right about that. If you really, 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 really want something and you take strong action to get that thing you want, it does feel like the universe kind of helps you. Like just, you'll, you'll start to get good luck in some areas. Now, you also have problems. You also have challenges. But, there, there is a feeling that, you know, that the more you want something, right, the more you'll get some good luck and eventually you will get it. However, you must be very careful because of this. You must be very careful about what you desire. Because desire is not always good. He's wrong about that. And powerful, strong desires are definitely not always good. In fact, they are often the opposite. They are often destructive, and sometimes they are evil. And of course, we, we don't have to think hard. We can imagine, we know this is very obvious. Greed, right? The desire, the powerful, super strong desire for money, 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 money. It can be very destructive. The desire for power to control other people. That's a strong desire. Many people have that strong desire. And many people become evil because 
of that desire. It leads them to terrible things, doing horrible, terrible things to other people. In general, the strong, powerful desire for pleasure, physical pleasure, is very, very dangerous. Again, this destroys people. This destroys people and their lives by following that desire for pleasure, more pleasure, more physical pleasure. People become drug addicts because they want and they desire that pleasure. People become alcoholics. People do incredibly terrible and stupid things following that desire. So we must be careful. Just, just desire in general is not automatically good. Absolutely not. In fact, all the world's great religions, all the world's great religions warn against this. They warn us. They, try, they tell us about the dangers of desire, of bad desires, and that we must guard ourselves against them, that we must fight against them, that we must overcome them, that we must not follow them. I'm talking about, you know, Christianity, uh, Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, etc., right? All of them warn about this. That we must be careful about desires. We must be very careful. Because their desire can, be, can lead you to very good things, of course, and can lead you also to pain and suffering and can lead you to great evil. So you have, to, when you have a strong desire, desire just means a, you want something, you want it, you want it, you want it so much. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. That's what desire means. To, that strong wanting. Well, don't just follow that automatically. You have to look at it and think about it. Try to calm yourself, calm your emotion, calm your mind. And with a peaceful mind and self-control, you have to decide, is this a moral, meaning good, desire? Or is this immoral, meaning bad or evil or harmful? Is this a wise and intelligent desire? Or is this an ignorant and foolish and stupid desire? Is this what might be called a right desire or wrong desire? Will this desire lead you to greater learning, growing wiser, growing stronger, helping yourself, helping your family, helping other people? Or will this desire lead you to suffering and pain and hurting other people and doing stupid things and maybe even you know destroying your life you you must ask these questions you must look at desires especially strong desires you've got to be very 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 careful you know desires are like money they're a lot like money we talked about with rich dad poor dad we talked about money and how money is it's just like energy it's a kind of Financial energy, it's power. Well, power can be used for something good or for something evil, right? And we talked about how many examples, many, many, many examples of people who suddenly become rich, they suddenly get a lot of money, and the money makes them actually less happy. It destroys them, right? Celebrities are the usual example. They're an obvious example. But, because money basically multiplies, right? It makes everything stronger. So let's imagine if you like drugs, right? You're kind of a drug addict. Let's say you like cocaine. Cocaine, you like cocaine, but you're super poor. You like cocaine, but you're very poor. Well, you don't have enough money to buy cocaine every day. So it, it actually limits, it actually limits that desire because you're poor. You don't have any money. So your 
desire, your addiction is limited by being poor. It's actually helping you, right? Being poor is helping you in that situation. Well, what happens if we give this cocaine addict, we give them $10 million, what happens? They go crazy. They go out and they buy unlimited cocaine and they do it every day. They constantly do it. Parties and parties and parties and parties and parties. And they just completely destroy themselves. They might even die from an overdose. The money actually makes everything much worse. It multiplies the problem, right? They had this addiction problem. Give them more money, it becomes actually much, much worse. And that's why you see people who are very unhappy, if you give them a lot of money, they don't become happier. They become less happy. They become even more unhappy as they get more money. Now, of course, the good news is that someone who works hard with discipline to build a business and they learn business skills and they, they get more and more money and they're a good person and they really want to help people and they care and they live a simple life, they have self-discipline, they have self-control, well, give them money or they get more money, they earn more money and usually they help more people and they do become happier and they do have a better life. So this is what desire can be like. It's a kind of a similar idea, right? It, it's the, it, it's what, what do you desire? That's what's important, <laughs> okay? You have to learn to identify. You have to calm your mind and your emotions and learn to be clear and look at those desires clearly. So I totally disagree with this one message of the alchemist because I feel like it's too simple. Coelho's only showing us half of the real situation in the alchemist. He's showing us what happens when you follow good desires. And I don't think he's, I don't think Coelho's trying to do anything bad. I don't think so. I think he, Coelho's just a nice guy. So, Coelho, you know, he naturally has, you know, good desires, or he had good desires. And he's writing, he, when he's writing for his audience, he imagines most people are good. So I think he just, he's just not thinking about it when he wrote this book of the fact that many, many, many people have unhealthy desires, have bad desires that will not help them that they should definitely not follow. I think that's all it is. I think it's just a little, he just, I think Coyle just makes it a little too simple because he didn't think as deeply about this issue as probably we should. That's all. So I don't think he's trying to give us a bad message. And I think really if it's just, we just need to say it in a different way. That's why I like the word dreams that Thoreau uses. When you say dreams, follow your dreams and the universe will help you. Dreams for me has a little bit more of a positive feeling that word does. So it's, it's more of a positive desire, right? It's a, it's a big purpose. I think that's an even better word, like a positive purpose, like a big purpose. And purpose has this idea that you're contributing, that, you know, that your desire, your big purpose, well, this is something that is positive. This is something that leads to happiness for you and happiness for other people in your life also. Purpose, mission, dreams. I think these are just better words. Desire is too general. Because desires can be very, very, very negative. So we just have to be very careful about this word. So if you are reading this book and your translation is using the word desire, 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 just be careful. I think an even better way there, I, I think we could use better vocabulary to solve this problem. I think two words I think would be the, the very best would be Instead of desire, let's not use desire. Instead, let's use the word craving 
and calling. A craving and a calling. These are strong, powerful words that are very clear. In English, a craving is just an emotional desire. It just means you want something. You really, really, really want something. That's called a craving. For example, <laughs> we often say, I have a sugar craving. I have a sugar craving. I personally have sugar cravings sometimes, right? That just means I have this straw. I want sugar. I want sugar. I want to eat something sweet. <sighs> right? It's just this. It's very powerful. It can be. This sugar craving, this strong desire. I really, really, really want to eat something sweet. It's a craving. But this is usually cravings are negative desires, right? Sugar's not healthy. It's not good for me to eat sugar. So this sugar craving, even it's very, very strong. It can be very powerful for some people, but it's not positive. That's what we don't, you don't want to follow cravings. Cravings are often very unhealthy. People have cravings to smoke cigarettes. People who are addicted to cigarettes, they have cravings for cigarettes. I, have a, oh, I just have this craving for a cigarette, right? This powerful desire. They want, 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 want a cigarette. People can have cravings for money, for pleasure, for power, for many things. So let's use craving as our negative desires. Let's use that word. On the other hand, what, what Paulo Coelho is really talking about, you know, we look about the whole story of the alchemist and we look, about, look at the character, Santiago, and we see, you know, what... What desires are what what desires is he talking about? He's not talking about sugar. He's not talking about drugs. He's not talking about sex. He's not talking about power. He's not really even talking about money. The story is about, you know, finding treasure, but that's really not the message of this the story. Because the main thing he's looking for is his Quayo calls it personal legend. His personal legend. What is that? What is so that's the desire that Coelho is talking about in this book. The desire for your personal legend. Legend means like your personal story, your personal myth. So what, is, what does it mean? It's, it's really the desire for meaning. It's the desire for a bigger, deeper meaning in your life. It's purpose, right? A life purpose. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about cravings for sugar or power or money or pleasure or all those other things that are very, very negative usually. No, he's talking about purpose, this deep desire, wanting of a purpose, a meaningful purpose for your life. Some might describe this, you know, as, as this, this desire for God. That's what Coyle's writing about. That's what he means when he says personal legend. That's what he means when he just is talking about desire. That's why desire is such a weak word for this. I, I just think it's a badly chosen vocabulary word. It's, it, desire can describe too many things that are very small and, and many of them quite negative. So I would use the word a calling, a calling. I think that would be a really good word we could use to describe this personal legend he's talking about. The desire for a personal legend. It's the desire for a calling, a calling in English. This is a great word. What is a calling? We're using it as a noun, a calling. Well, a calling is basically a deep life purpose. It's your life purpose. It's like your life work. In The Alchemist, he talks some, in some parts of The Alchemist, he talks about the master work, your master work. It's like your meaningful, spiritual life work. It's your highest, most meaningful most good life work, your purpose for life, the meaning of your life. That's what he's talking about. That's what this book is about. We should use a better word, a calling. I'll give you an example. 
Some people become doctors, right? That's a job. A doctor is a job or a career, right? So, oh, I want to be a doctor. Yeah, great. Some people become doctors to make money. Some people become doctors because their dad was a doctor. There are many reasons to become a doctor. They're all fine, no problem. But there are some people become a doctor because they have this deep, deep desire inside to heal people and to help people and especially to help people who are suffering. And like, so maybe one of these doctors, you imagine they go and they, they help people who are very, very, very poor. And then you talk to them and they say, oh, being a doctor, it's not just a job. It's a calling for me. It's not just a job. It's a calling, a calling. This is a calling for me. Where, where does this come from? Why do we use the word call? It basically is the idea that you, that. God is calling you to this job. It's like, you know, in your mind, deep in your mind, what Coelho's talking about in this book, in fact, that you're getting this message from your intuition, you know, from deep inside of you. And it's not, it's not actually coming from you. It's coming from, you know, basically the universe or God calling you to live a life of meaning, calling you to help others, calling you to this bigger purpose, this deeper purpose, this more meaningful purpose. And so this work, it's not just a job. Yeah, maybe, yes, they get paid, maybe, but it's much more than a job. It's a calling. It's work that is much bigger and more meaningful for this person, for this person. The Alchemist, this book, is about finding your calling and pursuing, meaning going after, trying to find and get and live your calling. That's what this book is about. Not just following any desire, right? Oh, I, I want to, I just want to get rich. Okay, I'm going to follow that. Oh, I just want to have fun and party. Okay, I'll just follow that and drink all the time. Oh, I just want to feel good. You know, that's not it. We're not talking about those desires. It's a bad word. I don't, to use for this, uh, for this situation, for this meaning. He's talking about your personal legend, your calling, your purpose in life, something deep and meaningful and powerful for you. Something, in fact, that's much bigger than just you and your little small desires. You know, he says in the book that most people don't follow or don't try to follow their personal legend. He's right. But most people do follow their small desires. That's what most people do every single day. They are constantly just following their little small desires, just trying to feel good for the short term. That's super common. That's what everybody does. All right. This is why I say this word desire can be dangerous. And when we Discuss the alchemist. And as you read the alchemist yourself, to be very, very, very careful about this word desire and to understand what Coelho is actually talking about. What is he really talking about? It's not just any desire. He's talking about your calling, your desire for life meaning, your desire for life purpose. Your desire for God, if you want to use that word. That's what this book is about. And that is, that is the desire he's talking about. All other desires you should be very careful about. They're not always bad, but just be careful. And that's why it's important, as I said, when I was describing a process. You know, as you look at a desire that you have, something comes up, you want something. This is natural. We're human beings. Your brain and your body want things, right? We, we have goals. We have desires. We want things constantly. That's okay. We, we need to do that to be alive, right? You want food. Of course you do. If you don't eat, you die. So, of course, you want food. You want water. There are many things you want. That's totally fine. But we have to understand that we have to control those desires. We have to understand those desires. We have to also understand that 
Sometimes, many times, we desire, we want things that are not healthy. We want things that are not good long term. They might feel good now, but then we suffer more later. Drugs are a great example of that. Alcohol is a good example of that. If you drink a lot, maybe it feels good to be drunk every day, right? Right now, ah, oh, feels great. But as you probably know, the next day it feels terrible. And if you do it for months and months and months and years and years and years, the terrible becomes worse and worse and worse. You get, you become really unhappy. You know, alcoholics are not happy people. <laughs> okay. So it's a very strong example of desire that can lead to suffering and destruction. And so this is why we've got to, it's not enough just follow any desire. We're trying to find that deepest or we might say highest desire, the calling, your calling, your purpose. Following that, looking for that. It's, and it's, it can take years and years and years. And in some ways it never ends, right? It's a lifelong process. That's what the alchemist is about. So we'll talk more about that tomorrow. I just wanted to be very clear about that because as I read it, that word kept bothering me. Desire, desire. I was like, ah, I don't, uh, we got to be careful with this word. It's really, I, I wish I would have translated that. I could translate that book a little better. I, well, I don't speak Portuguese, but I, I, I think I understand from the story and the book, I understand what Coelho is, uh, the message he's teaching us. And I think the translator chose a very bad word here. I think the translator chose a weak word. And I think this could have been translated with more powerful words that are closer to the meaning Coelho is really trying to give us. So a calling, a calling, purpose, a calling. Powerful, powerful. All right, well, join me tomorrow. I'll be live on Facebook tomorrow. That's tomorrow evening in Japan time. I'll go live. I'll do it live. And we'll do, I don't know. I'm not sure how, how much of the book I'll do. Probably like the first section of the book. And as usual, I will answer your questions and comments also live on Facebook tomorrow. If you missed the live video, no problem. Of course, I will add the recording here on the podcast, also on my YouTube channel, also on my BitChute channel. All right. Enjoy the book. We'll talk more tomorrow. And improve your pronunciation. Speak English with a clear easy to understand American accent. That's why pronunciation is important. So everyone understands you. When you speak English, everyone understands you all the time. Your speaking is very, very clear. So your communication is strong and powerful. I train you to do that with my pronunciation course. Learn more about my pronunciation course. Go to Effortless English club.com that's effortless english club.com